So, some of you might be feeling a bit overwhelmed with all the hype going around the Taken King, and I myself am being taken up by it, but it is also my duty as an avid gamer and YouTuber and somebody who takes games very critically to look at the game beyond face value. And there I found some interesting things in the Taken King. So here are a few things that you might have missed in all of the mayhem that is the hype. So first, upon release, the old PS4 exclusives will not be. That is, they'll be available for everybody. Xbox will be able to use Hawkmoon and even the Monte Carlo, as well as the other armor pieces that weren't available to them earlier. But they will be replaced with new ones. So PS4 is going to get some new exclusive armor, some new exclusive weapons, and I think a strike. Which is, uh, I, I don't know why they keep catering to PS4. I mean, it's been a year. Um, I wouldn't mind them handing some stuff to Xbox, but whatever. According to Deej in an interview, the Taken King will be featuring a complete campaign, and apparently behind closed doors they were able to play some uh, of the story missions, which contain more cutscenes. And these cutscenes are skippable, according to Bungie's new lead design head. These new story missions, according to people who have played them, are more well put together, um, are more clean cut and just prettier in general. So that's that's pretty exciting. It's nice to see Bungie finally getting back to that cinematic gaming they are so proud of being the king of. As we know, there's going to be three new subclasses, one for each class, um, each with the uh, last remaining element that we didn't have access to. But we are also getting a new level cap, not light level cap, but soft level cap. We're going to be able to level up to level 30, and our light level is going to be increased to, I think, 50. Right now, we, the highest character we've seen in the Crucible gameplay and such has been 50. As well, you'll notice in the Crucible gameplay that they played at E3 that the level their light levels don't seem to be present at all. Whenever you look at an opposing player, their level is level 20 or level 30. It's never above that, so has light level been completely removed from vanilla Crucible? Aside from that, characters will also have new access to new emotes. That's right, you don't have to just dance, wave, point, and salute. You're, we're going to have more e emotes that we will be able to equip, and that's real, just some really fun things. The expansion proper will also be adding several new areas, including Mars's Moon Phobos and Oryx's Dreadnought, which has been confirmed to be a new patrol zone, and complete with its own uh, new patrol missions, new events, and puzzles in hidden areas which guard loot. I'm very excited for that, and I want to explore the crap out of that place, because it looks enormous, just insurmountably huge, and just, oh, it looks so cool. Um, I don't know if Phobos is going to be a new explorable area, it might just be for story missions, and I don't know if they're going to be expanding on the um, other areas, but at least we get these two areas, as well as Saturn. In the Vidoc video, you'll notice that the character is on the Oryx ship, and they're patrolling, and they will pull up their ghost and nav mode, and you'll see on the bottom right, it says tracking bounties. Characters will now be able to track their bounties by pulling up the ghost. No more having to go through menus and menus and menus to see how you are doing on the progress of your bounties. It's just a very small and effective uh, quality of life change, and I hope to see a a lot more of those kind of changes in the game. Finally, in another interview with Deej, um, the strikes, the old strikes, will be getting a slight overhaul. Now, I don't know if it's complete overhaul, but I know that they'll be, they'll be adding elements from the Taken King to all of them, like the, the Taken themselves. So say you're fighting the Fallen in the Devil's Lair, when suddenly, Cabal. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. That's gonna bring some more, just, just more fun and reason to go back and play the older content, and I hope they put that through the entirety of the game. Maybe not story missions so much, uh, but that would also put some more replayability in the story missions, but just the strikes in general to make the strike playlist more tolerable and more fun, to just have those random crazy moments happen, that'd be, th th that sounds great and awesome. It's a step into a direction that I've not seen many games do, and I hope they keep up with this whole changing the world depending on what the hell's going on. Making the world more replayable, make it feel like it's actually changing and it's alive, making it feel more like we are affecting it. I know that, like, with this last DLC, or with the Dark Below, how this DLC is going to be directly related to the events in Dark Below, as well as what's going on in the House of Wolves. I just want it to be more, um, more apparent that our actions are actually changing things. And maybe some small things on the side, maybe community members, like bigger community members like Datto and things, just have little snippets of what they've done in the community, or what other people have done with RPing in the community, and just add them in to make it feel like it's actually alive and affected by the community, aside from us just completing story missions that are laid out for us. 
So, what do you guys think of all that? I'm really excited for The Taken King. I think the game is better now, better than it has ever been, and I think The Taken King will make it great. Um, if I missed anything, uh, please leave it in the comments down below. I've been Epsi, and I will see you next time.